Welcome, welcome. Hi, everybody. It is wonderful to be here. It's wonderful to be home in my pajamas. <laughs> I figured if we're talking pajamas tonight, the least I can do is wear pajamas, right? I have had so much fun. I, I say this all the time, but I really mean it. Meeting you all is my greatest joy. In workshops, wherever I travel, et cetera, et cetera, it's just a lot of fun. It's just a lot of fun. So thank you for being there. One, one funny story, not funny, I guess. It's not funny. Um, I was in San Jose, which, you know, that's kind of the area for those who don't know or maybe around the world. Um, that area of the country is having a lot of fires. So it's south of San Francisco and north of San Francisco is where it's having all the fires. And our workshop was plenty safe, but we had women driving in from all over, even from Australia. So I know Donna's not here, but hi, Donna. She's on her, she's in New York, actually. But anyway, um, they told these homeowners, this lady in our workshop was one of them, they, that sh they had an hour. They had to get out of their homes in an hour. You know, some of them, they made mandatory leave. And I said, oh my gosh, and I'm really empathizing with her, trying to, and I'm thinking, what would I even take if I had one hour? Like, what would you take? I'd, it'd take me an hour to figure out what to take. And she said she went up and grabbed her silhouette pattern, <laughs> number 195, the sweater set, because she had it all adjusted and all just perfectly fitted, and she just, no way was she gonna lose that in a fire. She ended up not having to go. They, they postponed it till the next morning. And then for her, thankfully, to others not, the wind changed directions and they never had to evacuate. So those silhouette patterns are irreplaceable. <laughs> Priceless, we'll call them. So I love that story. I just love that story. Um, but again, just to all of you in San Jose and gosh, down in Miami, I've been lots of places. Houston, I've been in the last little while. It's really an honor to meet you all and spend some time with you and talk and it's a lot of fun. Um, we are talking pajamas tonight and the whole, my whole goal, my whole line of thinking really is that I, you know, <laughs> the other, a couple weeks ago, I just, you know, my big fault is I plan too many things for one day. There's just no way the number of things that I plan for one day are ever going to happen. And that happens numerous times to me. You'd think at my age I would have learned by now, and I still have not learned. So I'm running around the other day, and I had two stops to make. One was a drive-through, and one was just run in. And that was it. I mean, I was done. But, you know, if you wait too long, the traffic gets bad. So I thought, nope, I'm going now. I'm not showering. I'm just going in my pajamas. And went to the drive-thru, no problem, went to the walk-in, and sure enough, saw a friend of mine that hadn't seen for some time, and literally, I'm standing there in my pajamas, and they said, hey, let's go grab a bite to eat. And I thought to myself, okay, just fake this till you make it. Sure, let's go get a bite to eat. And off I went in my pajamas. And the whole time I kept thinking to myself, you know, if I had some decent pajamas, I wouldn't be near as embarrassed. So my personal goal was to make myself some pajamas that I would feel okay in public. And because they are so fashionable this fall, that was the spurring of this webcast. So I've personally benefited greatly because I have some beautiful pajamas back here and I just am so excited. <laughs> but I also have talked to a lot of you around and asked, what do you wear to bed? Don't get too personal, but you know, what do you wear to bed and why? And you know, what do you like and what don't you like? And et cetera, et cetera. So I've got some really fun tips for you. What we are gonna do at the request of, of someone who had emailed me is we're gonna take a few minutes and answer some questions because there's a few questions that we probably need to clear up and get out of the way. So we're just gonna take a few minutes. We're not gonna go back to that format, but just for tonight, we're gonna to take about 10 minutes and answer questions that you have if you have them, okay? <laughs> All right. I don't think they were ready for that. I know, you're not ready. You're like, okay, wait, we're not allowed to ask questions anymore. No, and it really is just that, um, you know, every once in a while I say this, but I'm telling you, you guys, it might be to your benefit. If we wiped away all the webcasts 
and start it over because there's a lot of information and you can't find it or you it's here it's there and we try to organize it better we try to put the titles on now etc cetera, etc cetera. but i know it's you know hard to find there's a lot of information out there and thanks to our 30,000 whatever plus viewers i love the interim videos you post especially the recent lace skirts idea genius genius wow that's really <laughs> Yeah, it's a little overrated, but I'll take it. Thank you. And it, um, keep in mind, none of them are my ideas. I shop, and because I know they're, I'm not good at coming up with ideas, I shop. That's why I shop, because there's so many ideas out there. They're free. All you got to do is go out there and find them and bring them home, and that's, that's what I do, and I do it often. <laughs> but I'm glad you like them because the whole goal is to get you excited about sewing keep it simple don't make it complex don't quilt keep sewing <laughs> keep sewing clothing and i'm kidding because one of the gals in um in the san jose workshop was a quilter and we were teasing her about um quilting coming back to sewing and all that other stuff okay i love those old webcasts and rewatch i know you do i know you love them but i'm just wondering if there's just not too many you know there's a lot there's really a lot no, it's, it's okay. We're not going to take them down. I just keep telling, you know, everybody here, we need to just get rid of them all. Get rid of them. Every time I get an email, where can I find this? Just get rid of them. <laughs> we, we can't tell you where they are. We do them and we put them up for free, but you got to find them. Okay. That's what I always tell people. Sorry, you got to find them. That's terrible. I feel bad every time I say it, but I could spend half of my life searching for these things that you guys asked for. We can always keep them. We can always keep them. Yeah, we're going to keep them up long after I'm gone. They're going <laughs> to haunt my great-great-grandchildren. <laughs> All right. No questions. All right, you guys. But everybody's good? Is there a topic you want us to cover? Or focus on? A question topic? Now, I just want you to understand that um, the topic really that I've had a lot of questions on is darts. Darts are still, you know, in length, circumference, and depth. And here's the good news. You're really getting it. I mean, honestly, you're so much smarter. And I don't mean that that you weren't or any way. I'm telling you, I can just feel from the levels of the questions that you, you're having more success, you're smarter, that's so exciting. It, it's so exciting for me. It's just what it was all about in the first place. And love it. Absolutely love it. And for anybody who wants to sew, we should be able to sew a top and be able to sew it. It shouldn't be that hard. It just shouldn't be. There's information we need to know, but it shouldn't be that hard. So I'm going to remind you about LCD, length, circumference, and depth. It has nothing to do with magna magnetic principles or anything to do with any of those other things, length, circumference, depth, understand what those are when you go into fit, ask yourself, is this length? Is this circumference in this depth? There's still plenty of confusion and I get that you need to hear it over and over. That's why we're leaving the videos up so you can hear it over and over and over. Um, that, that's a big confusion. And then the armhole templates, those are big confusions that I see. Again, where do I get them? You get them from a garment you like. Um, let's say for this pattern, for instance, this is 196. This is the pattern of the month. It's 9.99. It has uh, eight armholes and eight sleeves in there. So find something you like, measure the circumference of the sleeve and the size of the armhole, and then go in and find the circumference of the sleeve, take the armhole that goes with it, and that armhole can go on any garment out there. Shoulder is one point, side seam is another point. Very, very simple, very easy to do. And really the goal is to unlock you guys to where you can just use almost any pattern out there now once you kind of get that down. And it's a very simple concept. What was funny at the workshop in San Jose is, um, or at least it was acknowledged that um, I would make a statement and somebody would 
I'm going to say argue, but, you know, they're not really arguing. They're just kind of arguing. But anyway, they would argue back, and I'd make the statement again, and they'd argue back. <laughs> and it's interesting to me that um, you all know it's true, and yet you still push back. You still argue. <laughs> and so that's why sometimes I think, okay, like, that's what I said. But I get that learning is layered. I get all that stuff. I get all that. All right, are we good? So I gave you a chance. Those three things have been coming up a lot. Darts, um, internal pivot points, external pivot points, arm pull templates, and then again, LCD, length, circumference, and depth. For those of you in our pattern making class, we're just having way too much fun. Um, it, it's just really exciting to see, so, you know, to see you all getting this. Will you ever teach lingerie? This is lingerie. Is this lingerie? Pajamas? Is pajamas lingerie? Like camisoles? Bras? Bras are not, I don't know, you know, I, I only try to teach things. I was only teaching fit because it, there was a massive misunderstanding and a massive hole in the industry. I'm not trying to teach everything out there. And I, I think there's a couple women out there who do a, a beautiful job of teaching lingerie and, and bras and I'm going to leave it to them. You know, they do a great job. You don't need me teaching that topic. Okay. And even, I'll even say names. Jan Bones does lingerie. She does a beautiful job. She has a lot of the um, parts and pieces and laces and all that kind of stuff. She's in Canada. And Anne St. Clair and her daughter, Monica Bravo, do bras. Monica's in California. Anne's in Kansas. Or, no, uh... Anne's in. Where's Anne? I'm not sure. <laughs> I think can't. I don't remember. Anyway, you know, those ladies, uh, Monica does an amazing job. She's got a new DVD out on bras, and uh, I again, they have all the fasteners, all the parts, all the pieces, and I would highly recommend them. Um, back when we had the conferences, the ETA conferences that um, I owned, we all taught at, those ladies taught with me, for me, and they did an amazing job. And I read the feedback, and I knew the feedback was really great, and um, I would recommend them. Okay? Okay. All right, so let's do pajamas. So all of these things, for me, could be worn from the bedroom to anywhere you want to go, to lunch. <laughs> So what makes the difference to me? The difference to me is the fabrics. It's all about the fabrics to me. When I'm going to get comfortable and crawl into bed and, you know, I want to be comfortable. I, I don't want fabric. I, I just want to be comfortable. I want soft fabrics. So I did a lot of washing. I did a lot of experimenting. And I had a lot of fun. I don't know where you want to start, but um, we're going to start with my, <laughs> I showed this one to my son the other day. I'll start here and then because I'll put it down. He said that looks too fancy to wear to bed. And I like that. So that's good. That's what we want because what this dark brown is and I, you know what I come to think of it I don't think we've got this fabric up yet. But anyway it's a beautiful dark brown knit. It's a cotton knit. And so all I did because it's so simple is I did a cowl and a pair of yoga pants. And I did them in the same color. Obviously you're not going to wear the belt to bed. And you're not going to wear this. This is what I had made last week with 196. And so I, what I wanted you to see was how fun it was that you could simply wear just the two pieces to bed and then throw something on over it to go out, which makes it really easy and really dresses it up. And you'd never know they were pajamas. The cotton really has great drape doesn't wrinkle, it washes well. I washed all of it ahead of time so that I could I threw it in the washer, threw it in the dryer so I could continually do that with my pajamas. And this pair, for some reason, I'm, well, I shouldn't say I'm most excited about, because I'm really excited about all of them, but I'm really excited about this pair. No changes, except that the cowl pattern, this is 550 cowl pattern, and because it's a knit, I put on my knit template and used my knit sleeve, okay? So knit body, and I did, a, I did a long sleeve because I'm always pulling my sleeves up anyway, and in the winter I really like to have long sleeves. So those are my pajamas, my first pair that I made, and I've already tested them, and they work. So let me just say that um, 
I did not do any, um, like, what do they call nightgowns. First off, I haven't worn nightgowns in as many years as I can remember. Like, I, I don't remember ever wearing a nightgown. I'm sure I did. Everybody did at some time. But I actually ask a few ladies, I ask everybody the last few weeks, you know, do you guys, do you wear nightgowns? And some do. Like, some swear by them. Um, some swear by them because they get hot and it's the coolest thing to wear in bed. So more power to you. I Like, if you wanted to do a nightgown, you could just make a long uh, cow neck. You know, just make it long. Make it knee length or something. What I don't like about nightgowns, and I tried actually one because after somebody made a really funny comment in the San Jose workshop and I decided I have to try it for myself. So last night, and she was absolutely right. Like the nightgown ends up around my neck. <laughs> so I'm not sure how anybody doesn't end up with a dress around their neck, but it's definitely not for me. But I think we'll definitely find everybody likes what they like. Um, the, when you're doing with a, a knit like this, don't do it too tight because this is a really thin knit. So you want it to just drape. You don't want it to cling. You just want it to drape. And, it, and that cotton drapes really well. And it's really pretty. So I think it's a great combination. I wish you could feel these fabrics. They're just incredibly soft. And that is our first set of pajamas all right so what i did is i did um i think i did six see i did one for every night of the week all right okay so then we go into my purple people eater oh my gosh i'm in total love with these like i can't wait i have not worn these but i can't wait because i'm i'm gonna wear them like all the next day I'm going to take a shower at night, I'm going to get dressed, go to bed, <laughs> and then keep them on the next day. And they're so cute. So this is 625 Caitlin's blouse. Um, I did, it is a blouse. And so again, I put a knit sleeve on here because I didn't want all the detail of the sleeve that's here, but it's, a, it's just a princess seam. I top stitched it though. I mean, I had really fun sewing it. The black is a Pontaroma knit. Um, little contrasting buttons and I did leggings with them and th this is just so cute I didn't cut this any longer I'm sorry I did I cut it three inches longer so that it would make sure it covered and then of course I did the buttons in the back there's little vents and this fabric is a two-way stretch oh my gosh it is so comfortable and just, I may do a webcast in this just so you can see my cute pajamas. They're really cute. Can't wear them to a workshop, but hey. So no changes to this other than, remember, switch out the sleeve. Instead of the woven, I'm going to use my knit sleeve and armhole. And then I cut it a little bit longer. You know, depending on how tall you are. And then I use the black trim just to give it a, a focal point and a pop. And remember, you still want to look thin when you're crawling into bed. You still want to look good. So um, I did the black contrast up here and then the black vertical line with the buttons. I did the little top stitching in black just to continue it on. But I think it's habit for me. So even when I'm working on pajamas, I still do the de <laughs> I still do silly details like that. Oh my goodness. All right, so there we go. Purple People Eater. Any questions on this? That's why I say, this is hard to say this is not my favorite because these are definitely, um, gonna be, be in the running okay we're good okay so then I decided we needed like a pair everybody should have a pair of silk pajamas so these are my silk pajamas and here's good news and bad news I washed the fabric twice and it's silk it's 100% silk I mean, it's a beautiful fabric. It's really, I mean, it's really, really beautiful. And boy, does it change every time. So I'm hoping you can see, because this is washing it once and this is washing it twice. And every time you wash it, it shrinks more. So clearly you're not gonna dry clean your pajamas. I totally get that. Um, so this fabric is probably not the best for pajamas. Unless you wash it a couple times, it shrinks, it's gonna shrink 50%. So what I did is, um, 
we we decided that the fabric it wasn't going to be I mean it's beautiful for making a jacket or making a blouse you'd have to dry clean it a skirt any of those things but we put it up at $14.99 which is ridiculously low for this fabric but because I I can't you can't wash it for pajamas and that's what I wanted I wanted pajamas but they're way too high maintenance for pajamas because <laughs> But I love the look. What I did is I um, I used linen for the contrast and for the collar, and then I put the pockets on. These are this is pattern 600. This is the classic blouse, and then this is 3100. This is the Lori's pants, without the overlays, and I mean I just think they are just the cutest ever. But again, you have to dry clean the pajamas. They're silk pajamas. They're wonderful, but I, I'm not sure I'm willing to dry clean my pajamas. And the washer and the dryer, it you can't wash it and not dry it. The washer did just as much damage as the dryer. So I've not ever seen a fabric shrink up this much. So just beware. You know, it's not expensive, but you got to wash it a few times. Get a whole bunch, wash it a whole bunch of times. I mean, it's gorgeous. Even like when you wash it in this puckered state, it's so cute. But like I said, it's... You know, if you washed and washed it and got a whole bunch, they would be great. If you have not been shopping for pajamas lately, they're ridiculously expensive. Like, I was really shocked how pajam how expensive pajamas were. And obviously, it depends on where you go. But it made me rethink, like, what my budget was when I was making them. Because I thought, okay, I've got to keep everything under 30 bucks. I couldn't find pajamas for $30. So I decided I could spend a little more. All right, so there's my cute little, um, you know, this is on the bias, the back's on the bias, and then the sleeves were straight, the pockets are straight, contrasting trim, and then the pants are done in 3100, and they're straight of grain. But love this. I mean, I just, I, I just think it's way too cute. Are we good? Do you have that fabric now? This fabric's on the site, it's just I'm telling you, get plenty and wash it, you'll lose 50%. Once you lose it, it's awesome, but, or else you gotta dry clean. Yeah, it's on the site, we just put it up. Hand wash, I, you know, I, that's a good question. I don't know. I don't think it's the water, you know, I mean, the washing machine is no reason, I have a front loader there's no reason that I would see that much shrinkage. The first wash it lost about 20%. The second wash it lost another 20%. There's not a lot of fabrics I've seen that with, so I'm just a little red flag. Okay, I usually throw them in the washer, throw them in the dryer, however they come out I love them. But when they're shrinking quite a bit it's kind of hard to, you know, to go with that. Anyway, love the fabric. Okay, so then we did a robe because everybody needs a robe. So look at my cute robe. And you know, really when you think about it, what's the difference between a robe and a coat? Like there's no difference, the fabric. So this is a wool. Why can't I have a wool robe? It's really soft. And so this is pattern number 1700. 1700 it's called the shawl collar jacket and I only used three body pieces the sleeve and then I made a little carrier for the belt and I made a little belt so it is like the cutest thing ever no facings no linings just really fun this is a wool silk we have so many beautiful two-sided fabrics just a heads up, so many beautiful two-sided fabrics. That that's what this is. I mean, it's just um, darker on one side, lighter on the other side. We had a lot of commentary about using fabrics and how to use them and why. Whenever you're using a fabric like this, where it's lighter on the one side and darker on the other side, and you're using the, the shawl collar to roll back, be sure you're using the lighter color on the inside because you notice this is where your eye goes. You wouldn't want the whole robe to be light and then roll back to the dark. 
just because that's backwards of what it should do. So you want the focus here, even though it's a robe, even though, you know, it's um, a very casual garment, you're still gonna go by the rules of, you know, focal point, line, illusion, all that kind of stuff. So this is just quick and easy. Again, I only used no facings. And so when I did the shawl collar, I did the wrong sides together because that folds over and you don't want that seam showing. I did wash this before I did it and so there's little kind of fuzzies all over. My, you should have seen my lint dryer, it had a world of fuzzies. I, again, this shrunk, be careful of it. Um, but you know, with a robe, I don't think you wash a robe all that often, so I didn't really worry about it. With the sleeves, I just rolled them up. I did do a two-piece sleeve, just because that's what was in the pattern, but I only have one front, the side, the back, and then the sleeve, the little carriers, and then I did a little belt. Very fun, really easy to do, and light and simple. What I did do is I picked out the size I traditionally made for myself, and I, I went up two sizes. That might have been too much. It's totally up to you guys. If you have a robe and you know like a wear over or whatever, measure it and see what that robe measures. So just see how big you like it. I didn't want to make it big, big. And this is big, it's oversized, but I like it. I really like it. And it's so warm because there's times I'm so cold in the house and I can just throw this on and it works. All right, so easy, fun. There you go. Styling, we are styling, because you could easily wear this out. You put on your over the knee boots, you wouldn't have to wear much of anything else. Leggings underneath, a little black turtleneck, it'd be awesome. So I think that it's really fun to think that it, in the name of robe, it becomes a coat, or what's the difference? It seems to me that it's kind of just the fabric, but kind of an interesting look at our different clothes and all the different things. What do you think of 915 Hugo's favorite cardigan with this robe? You know, I almost did that. The only reason I didn't is because this is not a knit and Hugo's cardigan is a knit. So it depends on, you know, what your, what your base is. I wanted to go with a non-knit and I wanted, you know, I wanted the concept to be with a non-knit. So it all depends on your fabric as to where you'll go with a pattern. But I did think of 915. I think it'd be a great robe if you had like a knit terry or something along those lines. We put up a black knit terry. We're going to put up a navy terry um, later on tonight. We just hadn't got to it yet. That would be great for Hugo's cardigan. Hugo's cardigan's good for that, especially with the belt and the carriers and stuff. Okay. Did you use larger armhole for the robe? I just used the whole thing. Like normally if I were a size two, I made a size four. So I just went up on everything. The armhole's bigger, everything's bigger. And two sizes, I don't think that's a magic number for you all. I'm saying, I'm kind of warning you, just think about how much room do you want? This is a single breasted. I wanted it to be a little bit double breasted, so I wanted it to have extra room around. And so I love it. I mean, I, I really, really like the way it turned out. I like the sizing of it and everything. And what I did when I say two sizes is I looked at what two sizes were how much bigger that was than me and it, it was what I wanted so that's what you want to do all right okay let's go on because this one is a fun one too and this fabric's not up yet we'll get this fabric up tonight we got in some um, crepe back satins and they're really pretty because they're stretch they're really really beautiful so I made a little pajama set to match. And I really like this too. What I wanted with this is I wanted something like pretty, like, I don't know really how to explain it, but I saw some pajamas in the store. They were $400 and they had like little open sleeves like this. They were just really feminine and, but simple. And it was perfect. This is the runaway dress. And so what I did is I made it a runaway t pajama top. <laughs> so I cut off like 14 inches off the bottom. I made Lori's pants, which are 3,100 to go with them. You could have done something else, 
because this fabric does have a stretch to it. I could have done a yoga pant, I could have done leggings. Um, it's long enough that I could have done leggings because this comes down, but I really like this together with it. So what I did is I didn't make any changes, just the length. That's the only change I made. Same sleeve that's in the pattern. Um, again, I, it, it's just a pretty little sleeve and, and it's not too long that it will get in your way. When you get into bed, it won't do any th issues. It has a yoke in the back and then it has a little elastic. That's all on the pattern. I just followed the pattern. Um, the, the front ties underneath to the back and then the back wraps around and ties to the front. And I just used a little bit of soutache, this black soutache, and I just stitched it on just right there on each side so that it comes around easy enough. This was a very quick, easy project. And I'm gonna tell you something, it's very, very flattering. The fabric, the way it looks, the pants, you know, it's interesting because pants suits are popular right now and this is pajamas, so I'm not comparing it to a pantsuit, but if you were to put this on and go anywhere, you just look smashing. <laughs> It's amazing how a concept of pajamas, the fabric is really soft, just fun. I mean, just really fun. So I'm gonna look good when I go to bed. <laughs> and then if I have to go out, I can put on my pink robe and we can go from there. So again, very easy to do. Just, it's really just a matter of picking, I think, picking your fabric first, picking really soft, wonderful fabrics, something that really feels good to you and then notice in most of them, I did top and bottom the same fabric. Actually in all of them, sorry. I did top and bottom same fabric because to me a lot of times that's what pajamas are. Is there the top and the bottom in the same fabric, especially like this one. That's the look that you're seeing a lot is the plaid with the top and the bottom matching. And I really like that this top was done in a bias and the bottom was not. I think it makes it look just I don't know, a little better than a pajama. It makes it look very purposeful and very planned. And I washed that pink, and I've got pink little fuzz balls everywhere. The lint was the most beautiful lint I've ever seen when I cleaned it out of the dryer, but I still got pink fuzz balls going all over the place. Okay, questions. When you say leggings, are you meaning the yoga pants or skinny jeans? No, I mean leggings, when I say leggings. Like, these are the leggings. These are, I'm gonna take them off. These are 5019. Just leggings. See, they're skinny, but because this fabric has two-way stretch, it was perfect to do the leggings with. So, that, that one I did leggings. This one I did 3100. 3100 is Lori's pants. If you don't have stretch, 3100 is great to use for pajamas. If you do have a stretch, the yoga pant is good. That's the one I used. Well, that's the one I've got on. And also the brown is a yoga pant. And then 3100 is if you don't have stretch or you're using a woven, 3100 Lori's pants works great. They all work great for pajama bottoms. They're quick, easy to make. I, I honestly think, you know, our anticipation keeps us from making these leggings or any of these patterns, but honestly, once you make them, it couldn't take me 30 minutes to make a new pair of leggings. And they're like brand new, they look amazing, new fabric, new everything, and the cost is so much cheaper than when you go and buy them. And you can make them long enough, short enough, you know, they're really good. I have one pair of leggings that I made, they're black, to go with my over-the-knee boots that I you see me wear all the time. And instead of taking them all the way to my ankle, I just cut them off mid-calf because it didn't make sense to me to, to wear socks and wear leggings and then wear the boots and do all that on top. So I just made them short and then, I don't know, it made a lot of sense to me. So that I love about sewing because if you have an idea, you can just do it and it works and pretty easy. Please tell us how you made the navy blue sleeves. Well, the, it's just the pattern. It's just literally part of the pattern. Uh, this is the... Um, what's it called? The runaway dress? Runaway dress, yeah. 4509 is our, <clears throat> our runaway dress. And so that's just the pattern and they're just anchored in a portion of the way because this wraps to the back and then this comes to the front. 
So underneath is completely covered. I, I just love this pattern. I think it's just really, really cute. Um, and the sleeve is very flattering on. I had done this in a sheer a little while ago. And this, when, like I said, when I was shopping and looking at pajamas and I saw this little fluted sleeve, it was just perfect for what I wanted. It was just, and it was a solid. And it was, like I said, expensive, real expensive. So I thought, gosh, this is just way too easy, way too simple, very feminine. And you could, if you wanted to, you could actually do a tie around the waist. I decided this was a little easier and less bulky than a tie. So some pajamas that you look at in the store, they actually like the, the robe over here. The pajamas actually have a belt like these, like the robe. And I don't like pajamas that have that, I decided, because number one, if you get into bed with the belt, it doesn't stay tight or it gets in the way, so I, I didn't like that idea. So this is just a suit tash, and it's just a very small tie right there on the front. And I just stitched it. We have the black suit tash. We've got it in the fabric page. But the, the I like the tie. I just wanted the tie for um, a wrap for the robe. Can we see the sleeve on that dark top? Your description was a, on the dark top. This top, maybe? I think you can see it. I can try to show it to you. See, it sews down to about the notch right there. And it sews in the back to about the notch also. cute. I could put it on. I shouldn't have offered that. Should I put it on? It's really cute on. You almost need an arm is why I said that. You almost need an arm to, sh to see how cute it is. But it hangs out like that. Jump, 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 jump. Great sleeve to have as a base sleeve. What pattern is the top you are wearing? This is um, 9, is it 917? I have the tank tops underneath, 500, 917. This is called oh. Ellie's Sport Jacket. This was an Ellie Tahari. I love this. I've made it in several different, these are actually my pajamas. And I'll tell you why, because what I did with this is I've got the tank top underneath and it matches. So, you know, I can run around the house with just my tank top and yoga pants. And then if I'm going to go out, I can just throw this on, throw this on over. And so I don't like to go out in just my tank top. So it's nice to have something just to throw over that, you know, you're looking at least a little better than tank top and yoga pants. So 917 L's sport jacket, right? All right, that's all I know. I know I had a whole lot of fun doing a whole lot of sewing. All right, is there a light blue top under the dark blue one away dress? Oh, no, 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 that is, um, that's my muslin that I fit this mannequin to me. I had this brainy idea, which I'll tell you all, it would turned out to not be brainy. So this is my dress form. And when you pad a dress form, you take 4,200 sheath dress, you fit it to yourself, and then you put it on the dress form. Well, I thought, okay, I, instead of doing regular muslin, I'll do blue. And I'll, I'll, I'll regret that decision. I'll redo it, probably over the holidays. I need to redo it anyway. Um... But this blue is so distracting that every, you know, the, the whole reason of using muslin is it's less distracting. The blue is too distracting. I don't like it. So that's what that is. That's actually the cover of the dress form that holds all the stuffing in place is what it is. Okay. Do you put pockets in your PJ bottoms? Um, in any of the patterns I made, 3100, Lord excuse me, Lori's pants has no pockets. The um, leggings, 5019, has no pockets. The yoga pants, 3400, have no pockets. The short answer is no. 
Because why do you put pockets in your pajamas? I know why. Don't tell me. I know. I can hear you. Um, Kleenex. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. No, because I guess I have four sons and I did the wash for all those years and they never took the stuff out of their pockets. And I was endlessly finding things in the washer and the dryer. I'm not a pocket person. I just, some people love them. Some people don't. I'm not. I, I don't. So no, no pockets. I put pockets in my tops though. See, I have pockets here. I like them there. All right. So are we good? All right, you guys. We're going to leave you 15 minutes to go sew your favorite garment. We're going to be back in two weeks. We have so much coming up. Will you guys watch your email? Promise you'll watch your email. We got a lot of stuff coming up. Um, in two weeks, we're going to do the pattern of the month for November. It can't be November. Do you remember it was just January? I know. Ten months ago. I got it. But the, just someone said to me the other day, time goes faster as you get older. So I have to keep saying, stop saying that time goes fast because that just means you're old. So I'll stop saying how fast the time goes, but it does go really fast. Anyway, in two weeks, we'll talk about um, the pattern of the month for November. We'll announce that on the first, just like always. And your POM, oh, we've got muslin. We've got the stretch muslin. We don't have a lot left, so if you want some, be sure and get that, that knit muslin for making trials. The POM is ending. Next week is the last day. Tuesday's last, Tuesday's Halloween. Hopefully you're making some Halloween costumes for somebody. It's kind of a fun time of year. Um, these are my Halloween costumes, so I can go trick-or-treating in my pajamas, and it's perfect. I'm all ready. And we will see you in two weeks. How's that sound? Any questions? We're good? All right. I think it's called adios. Later, later. Happy sewing from Silhouette Patterns.